Hello, and welcome back to Bits and Bobs. And recently, I've been down on holiday down to Cornwall. And of course, while I was there, I found the local antique shop where we were staying, and had a look for the coins in the antique shop. So, I managed to do some filming in the antique shop, so I'll show you now the pictures and videos I took in the antique shop of what coins were on display. I didn't film everything, but I got a few shots for you to look at, so let's have a look. So as you can see, some nice coins on offer, and now I'll show you what I bought while I was down there in Cornwall at that antique shop. So, as usual, I put the coins in this box and I'll give you a sneak peek, and we'll go through one by one, from the worst to the best. Whoa, very small sneak peek there. I may have seen some small coins, as I did buy a bunch of small silver sterling threepences, and a few 50% ones as well. I will start with the 50% silver ones. The first one here is right here, is a 1933, so sadly not a penny. But a threepence, we have the three acorns and the three oak leaves there with the three interlock branches, a design by George Kruger Gray, and we can see the words threepence there to the top. This is of course a George V coin, as we can see here, his only portrait by Bertram McKennell. So that is the first coin, and was very good to get down there. The threepences are in a bundle, and I'll reveal the price at the end. The next coin up, we'll go for a sterling one next, shall we? Here it is. This is a nice older one from 1908. And of course 1908 is not only the Morley style design, but also Edward VII. As we can see here, his portrait by George William de Souls. We have him facing to the right, with a sort of, he looks bald, but his hair's been very worn, as these coins, as it was the last one, are a little bit worn and a little bit dirty. But they did come in a good price for the silver, so I cannot really complain. The next coin up is this one here. This is one from 1916. So again, a sterling silver coin from World War I. So there's some good history to this coin, and again, that same design, of the oak branches in the wreath surrounding the three, crowned with a date 1916 either side. This coin is from the reign once again of George V. We can see his portrait here again by Bertram McKennell with the legend around. This coin is a bit less worn and much less dirty. You can see a more clear silver bright colour to this coin, which makes it look much better in my opinion than some of the more dirty ones of course. A few to go, we now have another dirty 50% coin. This one here is quite dirty indeed. In fact, the details are very, very good. You can see all the little dots there on the acorns there's no wear, or minimal wear, but just a lot of sort of dirt within the fields of the coin. Now you can see the date there, 1936. And that was of course the last year that George V appeared on coins. And the obverse here is even more sort of dirty and darkened. You can just about see his portrait there. But um, yeah, a very dirty coin, and a very small amount of silver, within a 50%, only half of this coin is actual silver. So if you imagine just that much of the coin, a little bit of silver there, less than a gram. There are a few more threepences to go, but I'll give you something else to look at for a moment. We'll have a little break halfway through. And you can see here that this is an old copper halfpenny with Lady Britannia there on the reverse. And it is quite corroded. You can see there's a bit of dirt, a bit of corrosion in the coin. But the detail is pretty much all still there, just, just fairly worn over, but nothing missing. You can see there's the shield there, which would have had the Union flag on. We then have a staff being held by Britannia here, not a trident in these earlier days. Then a branch of leaves there in her other hand, with her draped clothing and her hair in a bun, no helmet like on later issues. You can see the word there, Britannia, around, of course, for the country and for the symbol of Lady Britannia. And then to the bottom there, if we get a little zoom in, we can, I think, see the date quite clearly. We can make out 1743. Comment down below if you disagree, but I think this one, often they're a bit hard to tell from this sort of old corroded half pennies, but this one is fairly visible to see as 1743. A date I did not have for my old half pennies. So a new coin for the collection, and you know, even if I did have it, for a good price of just £1.20 for this coin, um, you know, the age on that is almost close, closing in on 300 years, 280 years old for this coin, there's some great history. Now 1743 would of course be from the reign of King George II, we can see his portrait here, done by John Crocker. Facing to the left, we see a laureate in his hair, and again we can see although corrosion has happened, all the details are still there, you can make out his face with the eye, nose and mouth details, and his sort of um, Roman style battle uniform there on the coin. He was of course the last king to join his troops in battle and the legend Georgivus II Rex, simply meaning King George II. And now we'll carry on with the last few of the threepences. 
The next one up being this right here. Another not very dirty one, a light colour and patina to this coin. This is an 1892 three pence, which would of course be from the Jubilee era of Queen Victoria. So if I look here, we can see there the Jubilee head portrait by Sir Joseph Edgar Boehm on the obverse there. And then a very small legend, because it's quite long, the text has been made very small, especially on a small coin. A legend going around there. A little bit worn, but no dirt to the coin. So overall, a nice, nice coin there. We have two more three pences to go. Next up is this one right here. And this is a 1920 three pence. 1920, of course, that is the first year that the coins are then 50% silver, not sterling. So rather than 920 parts per thousand being silver, this has 500 parts per thousand, or half, 50% of the coin being silver. But still has the older design with a Morney style design there on the reverse. We then see to the obverse here the portrait of King George V, the same as on the other ones with a different design, but the same portrait as I say, only one portrait of King George V. Now then we're on to the last threepence, or threepence as some would say. This is the oldest one, and it has been very, very darkened indeed, although the quality is still pretty good. You can see the date there, 1884, so this will be a young head Queen Victoria one, with again the same design by Jean-Baptiste Malen, the crown, the number three, the date, and the wreath encircling. And these coins, although they're quite small, I mean they're quite a little classic design, but they're very common indeed, these little threepence, most of them, you know, many, many millions of these coins out there, and often can be picked up very cheap, as I will tell you in a minute, I did get these cheap, and are just, you know, a good way to get old coins, Victorian silver coins, for cheap. So 1884, again, a date I did have, I did mention, I think I'll say, all of these are dates I did have, so there's no new dates in my uh, date run, but I got them all because they're a very good price, revealed in one moment, I'll have a look at the obverse, Seeing here again the young, seeing here as I say, the young head portrait of Queen Victoria, the legend around, and again, not too poor condition to be fair, all details can still be seen, an intact legend, and even the beading and the border is still fully intact, very darkened on this coin, it looks almost sort of an oily, kind of slick kind of uh, effect to the coin, but there we go, that's the final threepence, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven threepences, a mixture of mostly sterling, but a few 50%, and these were all as a bundle for five pounds. So, in other words, very good deal there for these three princes, as, you know, five pounds for that much silver is pretty good, and as well as the silver, you get the history and sort of collectability of some of these old coins. So there we go, and now we'll move on to the better coins. There is a very large crown coming up, and a 1600 silver coin. What should we look at first? Let's go for the 16... No, let's go for the crown next, because it's a bit shined up. It's a very nice coin indeed, but as we can see, a little bit of a shined up crown. Now you may have actually seen this one, on one of the pictures or videos I took in the antique shop. I didn't manage to film everything there. I do believe this crown, maybe the other way round, was on display in one of the cabinets there at this antique shop. So as I can, as I say, this is a very shined up coin, I have to admit, which doesn't look the best. It doesn't actually look as shiny in person. It's a bit more, the, the lighting of the camera setup does give a bit more of a shine to it anyway. So it looks a bit worse for wear in terms of the shiny department, but it is, it is shined, I will not lie. Now you can see the usual design here of St. George with the helmet, cape, and his sword there, on horseback, slaying the dragon, being trampled underfoot. Now we can see the date there to the bottom, and 1900, the turn of the century, the new century, the new 20th century had rolled in, and they were still making silver crowns. And this is a new date, my crown date run, and in just a moment I'll add it into the date run, a new date ticked off for my crown date run, very nice. We have the edge inscription here, the edge inscription you can just about see there reads, Decus et Tutaman Anno Regni and then the date in Roman numerals, which is LXIII, and that isn't the date 1900, that'll be the date that Queen Victoria has reigned for that many years, so LX, that's 62, and then 63, sorry, so 63, so the 63rd year of Queen Victoria's reign. Obviously making sense mathematically, as 63 minus 1900 would be 1837, the year she came to the throne. So the 63rd year of Queen Victoria's reign, near the end of her reign of course, with the veiled head portrait here to the obverse by Thomas Brock, TB can be seen there for the designer, we have a crown under a veil, an earring, a necklaces, and you can see as well a brooch there, so a cool detailed design of Victoria with a legend going around. And again, all a bit shined up as I do say, the only downside to this coin. However, it was a good price, you may have seen the price there, I'll put a picture on screen if I have got it, as £25 each for these crowns. So I got this one here, it's not too bad of a deal I think, £25 is what I expect to pay for this coin, the mintage is there on screen as well. Now I believe, off the top of my head, I know they're all a little bit rarer than sort of smaller coins, but this is a slightly rarer date of the crown. So now, without any further ado, let's add it into my crown date run. So here's my tray of crowns. We have here my earliest date, which is the 1818 from George III there. So we'll have a look now and find out where the 1900 should go. So we've got 1892, 1894, 1895, 96, 
1897, and a large gap here between 1897 up to the next one I have is the wreath crown from 1928. So the new coin should go there. So we'll have to move along every crown and put this last, the newest on this tray, the Princess Diana Memorial one, will then go on to the next tray as it you know, gets moved along with a new coin. That's not the new coin. Where is the new coin? Here's a new coin. Right, let's sort it out. Yeah, so we'll move it along now. We can see I've got my sterling silver crowns here. We now got two, the top two full rows of sterling silver crowns, ending with my newest one so far, as that 1900. We then have some 50% ones here, the wreath, the rocking horse, and the coronation crown. Then the later issues here of the Cooper and Nickel ones that I'm sure you're all very common with. So there we go. The crown date run has been updated with a 25 pounds purchase of the 1900 crown. And now we'll move on to the last coin I bought at the antique shop down there in Cornwall, which is a 1600s coin. Now, spoiler alert, it is very worn, as maybe you'd expect for such a coin with four centuries of history behind it. And it is, I've just grabbed it here, this one right here. So this is a silver shilling from the reign of King William III. We see the date there, 1695. So some great history to it, of course, 1600s there. The reverse design is quite worn, but you can still make out there is four crowned shields, to the top shield, there would be the three lines of England. To the bottom shield, the three French lilies. To the left is the half of Ireland. And to the right would be the most worn shield, the lion rampart of Scotland. And in the middle, there would be a lion of orange, of referencing the house of orange, part of which William III belonged. Now here is the obverse, much better condition in my opinion. Now we can see here, quite a good portrait of William III, to be fair, for such a small price that I paid for this coin. We can see his portrait here with his sort of iconic flat nose. His eyes and mouth can still be seen. His laureate just about seen as well, and long curly hair made out. We then have the legend reading Govelmus III de Gra, meaning, of course, William III by the grace of God, how he's been chosen by God to be the king. And we can see there the legend is quite intact. I like the word Govelmus. It's a cool 1600s font minted onto silver four centuries ago. So a cool purchase. I didn't have this date. I had a William III shilling already from 1697. I've now got 1695. So a great old new coin to add to my collection for the small price of only £4.50. That's right, an absolute steal for this coin. So a good price and a good coin. I don't mean it's, you know, I believe it's a good coin. It's a bit worn, some may say, to collect high grade coins. But in my opinion, this coin has done its job for centuries, being used and handled by 1600s Gvelian subjects back in the day. So there we go, a great coin for a good price in my opinion. So there's the coins I bought this week, as well as, of course, the silver crown. Please comment down below your favorite coin. For me, although I really do love a crown, my favourite denomination, I might give it to the William III this week, as that portrait is really good. And of course this is a bit shined up. The last thing to do is add these three princes, as they're all not new dates, to my silver trough. Here is my silver trough, as you may have seen before, I'm aiming to fill the whole thing with silver, to basically have a bar of silver that big in my possession, which will be a good investment for the future. These are all got at good prices, so we can add them in, slowly filling up the trough even more. There we go. So we can one day fill it with silver and have a full trough of silver. So if I ever need to have a bit of money, for instance, I can just sort of reach in there and that's a good ounce or two of silver, obviously having the in inherent value of the silver. And it makes a lovely sound. I'm sure you'll agree, some nice coins bought there down in Cornwall. Some 1600 silver, 1700s coins, 1800s coins, some nice history, some nice coins, and a new coin for my date run. So a good buying there down in Cornwall. And as I say, please comment down below your favorite coin that I bought while I was down there in Cornwall. And of course, lastly, thank you for watching. Please do leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And we'll see you again soon with some more coins in the future on Bits and Bobs. Bye for now.